Whether you're planting herbs and salads in a container on your balcony or you're digging up a whole paddock, there's a few things organic gardeners need to know. Firstly, raising your soil. Raising your soil stops compaction, it warms it up quicker and it stops your plants drowning in the wet weather. Secondly, it's best your garden is contained. This holds in the soil and stops weeds and other pests coming into your garden. Here we've used 100 by 100 macrocarpa sleepers and on this side we've used concrete fence posts. Both the macrocarpa beams and the concrete posts are continuous so snails and slugs can't set up home between the gaps. Using old bricks from the house may look nice but they provide homes for the slugs and snails to live in. These beds are about 200 millimetres high. This is the perfect height for a raised bed. The taller the bed, the more fill it requires and the easier it is to dry out over summer. At a height of 200, you can grow all vegetables, even root crops, without any problems. The crushed gravel around this bed is ideal. It keeps the weeds at bay, stops the slugs and snails from coming into the bed and warms up during the day, releasing the heat at night. Crushed shell is also a good medium around your raised beds. It will do the same as the crushed gravel, but also the white of the shell will reflect the light onto your plants. Raised beds can cost you nothing if you've got the materials at hand or you can source it from someone else. Otherwise, there are cheap enough options available at hardware stores. Corrugated iron usually works really well. Kit sets are easy to put together if you don't have access to a lot of tools. Just be aware that most timber kit sets are treated so you'll need to line the beds with polythene to stop the chemicals leaching. If you're putting paths around your bed, lay weed matting down first, put your garden beds on top and cut the weed matting from inside the garden bed. If you're a do-it-yourself type, my first choice for making a raised bed would be macrocarpa. Macrocarpa is a naturally durable softwood, uh, which means you can use it raised gardens, that sort of thing, without having any treatment and it'll last a good 10 or 15 years in that sort of situation. When installing your beds, it's best not to make them too wide. Probably a metre to 1200 is maximum. You need to be able to reach into the beds. And secondly, hammering in pegs in the corner of your beds is important for two reasons. One, to keep them square and secondly, to stop them moving. The next consideration is irrigation. The spray varieties are probably the most common. They're best installed before you put your soil in. Otherwise there are drip ones and soaker hoses. Put them on a timer to go off around 15 minutes a day first thing in the morning. Remember water in the morning for growth and in the evening to revive plants if they get too dry. Siting your bed is important. It needs at least six hours a day of sunshine for optimal growth. Also, if you've got a bed with some shade from a tree, during summertime it's great to grow your lettuces and your heat sensitive plants. Okay, I'm looking for some veggie plants for my new veggie patch. We do have some beetroot just over here. We've got um, bull's blood and cylinder, I think. It's, it's a small medium hot, uh, medium hot chili there. Um, it's good for drying and cooking. If you're working out how much garden space you need, it all depends on the size of your garden. It also depends on how much time you have to put into your garden and what sort of crops you grow. Things like potatoes and asparagus take a lot more space than things like lettuce and rocket. It's about starting small if you want to and learning what you like to grow and then moving on to bigger things.